Hi there and welcome to Innovating for a Better Tomorrow, an Infosys presentation. It's an interesting time to be an innovator and entrepreneur in India. With the developed world forced to face up to its economic decisions, there's an opportunity here for young innovators and young entrepreneurs in India to come up with bright new ideas and make their mark on the innovation and enterprise map. Infosys, led by Mr. Narayan Murthy, has always lent its support to innovations and ideas from its inception. And now, Infosys is joining hands with us here at Network 18 to bring you fascinating stories behind innovations that have transformed India. These pioneers are role models for innovators of the future. 16 million HIV infected people across the world are now winning against AIDS. Thanks to CIPLA. India has to decide its own destiny and India's destiny should not be decided outside of India. Three million children in India have access to quality education thanks to Pratham. The idea of Pratham itself was an innovation. You spend little, you use the resources and make the system function better. For a social innovation to succeed, you need an ingenious idea and a determination to push it forward. Madhav Chavan's Pratham is an organization reaching out to lakhs of students in the farthest corners of the country, creating strong foundations at the primary school level. This is how Pratham is grooming young minds to think out of the box and become tomorrow's innovator. <laughs> Samrat is just eight years old and the high point in his day is this journey across the river through the mangroves of Sundarbans to a special destination, school. And rushing through the lanes of East Delhi is Chama, striding with a single-minded purpose to be the first one to reach school. I'm fifth class in first year. My papa na ka ki ma bhot khushu. Almost Pied Piper like, the magic of learning letters and numbers draws children across the country to schools. Over 200 million of them attend primary schools every day, making India boast of a 74% literacy rate, a 600% spike up since India's independence in 1947. But is literacy the same as knowledge? Is every school-going child being truly educated? Samrat, who goes to a municipal school in Durgapur in West Bengal, Sundarban district, says he loves school now. But earlier, he just could not comprehend what his teacher taught. Like Samrat, almost 23% of school-going children in rural India can't read letters or words. And a third of these children don't know numbers. These figures suggest that over a hundred million children are two or more years below their grade level. With inadequate infrastructure, poor student-teacher ratio and old-fashioned teaching methods like rote learning, what we have is a widening gap between children who simply attend school and those who actually learn in schools. But 20 years ago, one man decided to change this and bridge the gap between schooling and learning. I came back to India in 1986 from the United States after acquiring a PhD and doing some postdoctoral work uh, in 1986 to become a chemistry teacher. But by 1989, I was attracted towards the National Literacy Mission, which actually was appealing to people to participate in it. And its message was that India can become totally literate in a short period of time. That was impressive. And the second thing was it said, governments can't make people literate, people have to make themselves literate. And I was moved by that. But by 1991, the country had changed and the National Literacy Mission 
uh, instead of becoming a movement, had become increasingly bureaucratized and not the mission that I had wanted. So, by 1993-94, I was looking for a completely different idea to work with. The idea of creating a societal mission that UNICEF floated was exactly the right kind of innovation that was required. Madhav Chavan's idea was simple but path-breaking. He wanted to ensure that every child is in school and learning well. The emphasis on high quality of education led to the adoption of the remedial learning model, where the aim was to bring the children up to level to the class they are in, increase enrollment in schools through parallel learning and ultimately eliminate the low learning trap. This innovation, a revolution really, is now changing India's literacy map through his NGO, Pratham. The idea of Pratham itself was an innovation. The name Pratham was chosen because Pratham stood for first, first of its kind, and also in a different context, primary, for primary education. Pratham started with the idea of working on a large scale. Today it is present in 19 of India's 28 states, enrolling over 2.6 million children. By making learning enjoyable and simple through charts and props and the use of local languages, it encourages children to sign up for a holistic education. So now, Samrat only needs a couple of straws to solve the arithmetic sums which were once a complicated puzzle for him. Setting up infrastructure in remote corners of the country was cost intensive, so Pratham adopted a capital light method. We had learned to use public spaces, schools, uh, places of prayer, public places that the villages could offer, where children uh, could come, gather together, sit and learn, read, whatever. It was supposed to be a catalytic effect, so that you spend little, you use the resources and make the system function better. But a teaching model was incomplete without its most important element. Yes, quality teachers is where Madhav Chavan decided to invest his money and trained local community people to internalize Pratham's innovative teaching methodology. So far, Pratham has trained 61,000 teachers. Among them is Ranjith, a final year BA student who conducts Pratham learning camps in the district schools of Sundarbans. This not only gives him financial independence, but also a new perspective on his own learning. It was that every child didn't come to me. लेकिन प्रथम का जो मेथड यूज़ किया और बच्चे लोगों को जब बहुत डेवलप हुआ उसके बाद गांव का हर बच्चा हमारे का पढ़ने के लिए आ आ जाते थे। कौर और कौर बाह तुम्हें क्या लगता है? The next key challenge was to overcome the language barrier in reading among children to maximize प्रथम's reach and ensure learning for all. And from this necessity, another innovation was born. In most of the slum communities, villages, underprivileged uh, children, if you will, or even for privileged children who can read in their own mother tongue, not enough books are available. With that idea, Pratham started publishing its own books. Today, every book that is published by Pratham Books is printed in 8 to 10, 11 languages. These Pratham books have travelled the length and breadth of the country to ultimately reach these little children. Learning camps is the latest Pratham innovation to teach children how to read. Uh, we do about three to four learning camps, each of no more than eight or ten days. 
In other words, about in 30 days cumulative over a four month period, uh, a child can learn to read. Hand or foot wide. Shama, along with her friends Anjali and Priya, goes to one such learning camp in Delhi's Silampur area. We sentence and words English. While the literacy revolution was in full swing, Madhav Chavan felt there was a lack of government accountability in expenditure on education programs. We thought of an annual report on the status of education for the whole country after Dr. Manmohan Singh took over in 2004 and imposed a 2% education cess. There was no such survey being done in India. Even governmental data was very short and not readily available. So in 2005, Pratham's members spread out across the country, testing and framing each and every child in rural India. Measuring the enrollment as well as the reading and arithmetic levels of children in the age group of 6 to 14. Giving India its first ever annual status of education report or ASAR. It was simple, it was transparent, it was focused on measuring something that the government should have achieved and an effort in accountability. By 2010, people in other countries were also saying we want to do this in Pakistan, in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. Uh, the basic ASAR methodology has been replicated. Pratham is a significant player in ensuring that the Right to Education Act of 2009, which guarantees eight years of not just schooling for all, but learning for all children, is effectively implemented. For its 2.6 million children and counting, letters and numbers now make perfect sense. The smiles are multiplying and adding up to big dreams. 16 million HIV infected people across the world are now winning against AIDS. Thanks to CIPLA. India has to decide its own destiny. And India's destiny should not be decided outside of India.